did a couple. We actually were starting to get so, you may have heard this, we started to get so many letters from people asking essentially what we do, the car debate. It was like, wait a minute, we could do that. <laughs> and it wouldn't be Paul and I just look at each other going, hi, cars. I don't know, you know, right. so. No, Ross anyway. and I completely understand that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hence, here we are, literally. All good. All good. Very cool. That's funny. After, after 20 episodes of staring each other in the face over Skype. After 20 episodes of talking about a Bronco and uh, not really talking about anything else. <laughs> How many of you guys done? Uh, 36. You were 37. 37. Cool. And is it Ross weekly? Is, or? Yeah, weekly. It's weekly. Every, every yep. uh, Thursday. I've thought about dabbling with Wednesday. Um, just because I think Smoking Tire hits Tuesday, Thursday. And I was like, Let's yeah, they moved. Fill the gap to Wednesday. So random question uh tech question i do have an external mic i could plug in if i'm feeling pretty room tony i'm ha happy to plug in an external mic if you want mic if you want uh, whatever's think, good for you i think you sound pretty good right now <laughs> okay. right, last go weekend or not last weekend last thursday we recorded with my dad and we were literally sitting at a table with the mic about four feet away from us so it's it's whatever you want to do it, and it okay. sounded good too did okay. it? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Since I've got an external that I could plug in, I just thought I'd ask the question in case you had a preference. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I was just literally discussing with Ross. I was like, man, I have a really cheap microphone. I want to send Guy Fieri. I didn't, haven't heard that one yet. Oh, was it yet? He was either. on Smoking Tire today yeah. and he needed an external. Like, Guy's got all the money in the world. I mean, <laughs> my, my, we talk about this all the time. My mic's $16 on Amazon. Totally. <laughs> Well, but, but we, we struggle with this anytime we have a guest on the show, because, I mean, as you guys know from listening, it, it is completely dependent upon what they do on their side. And if I had my choice, I would send them gear and be like, please use this. We'll talk yeah. you through. Because, and the other thing is, and it depends on the, on the call, sometimes we have somebody's direct cell phone number and it sounds okay. Mm -hmm. But man, half the time, the person we're talking to has a handler. And yep, so the right. handler has called everybody over voice over IP and then they connect us to that person's cell phone and Booted we have zero through. control and the quality is terrible. And we're just like, all right, we'll have a conversation. Hopefully everybody can hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a spectrum. I mean, totally. Totally. Glucker used to record most of the shows sitting inside of a press car, like with a iPhone. So, totally. yeah, you know, and those sounded good too. The one with him it's, 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 and, it's, 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 uh, Travis Okulski and Blake Rong in a God, were they oh. in a Hyundai where Gary Busey was behind them or something in traffic? <laughs> that was like a weird show. That was that was kind of hilarious and amazing and a weird oh, moment all at I the same time. Blake lives like a half hour from me. I have to contact him at some point. Yeah. Very cool. I forgot about Blake. We'll have to ask him dumb Miata questions. How long oh, are your yeah. shows generally? A uh, little over an hour normally. Yep. Okay. All right. So, and know. I started recording a little bit ago, so we'll probably just try. lighting. I don't know what we're dealing with here. I'm just trying to see what works. But anyway. It's, uh, it's right. about as informal as it gets. We have, we follow something resembling a structure, which is, you know, the normal formats. News and then topics. So, Got it. Well, Got it. I mean, all, our new, I don't know if you saw the notes, but the, the news totally. is, is pretty light this week. That's great. No, I, I, I saw the sheet. Thanks for that. Helpful. Mm -hmm. Paul and I do the exact same thing. It's the lifesaver, so I totally get it. Um. <laughs> The weird part is, uh, so I have four kids, and as remote school has started, normally I generate the show notes. In the last two weeks, I've been like, Ross, can you please? Yeah. It's been a little chaotic. I don't, I don't know if you can hear over my mic, but the yeah. two-year-old's getting ready to go to bed. So. How many school is continuing. Four kids, what are their ages? Uh, no, it's a test. 12, 9, <laughs> 5, 2. You've heard the Gaffigan joke, right? Where he rattles off their ages and goes, I should probably learn their names. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's wow, funny. man, you're busy. That's well, great. And it's, it's funny that you say that because I, when I post pictures of them, when I, with our first, I never ever put his name out there. I would just call him kid 1.0. Sure. And so now I'm up to 4.0, like, yeah. which I, I'm pretty sure I stole from uh, Belted Radial down in Australia. Do you guys know Belted Nick? Radio. Lo Lofty Tech is uh, his Instagram. Mm. Uh, I know that one. Yeah. I know yeah. That one. So okay. that's Mick. And he's got three kids, but he calls them V1, V2, V3. So <laughs> you know what you should do? You should, you should change it up and just put a zero after like kid 20.0 and see if anybody picks up on it. <laughs> well, I refer, I refer to the dogs the same way. <laughs> sure. The sad thing is we're up to, I think, dog 4.0 as well. So. <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, your household is the opposite of mine. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm a zoo where you're just you and Sam. Yeah, I have enough Halloween decorations for all of the children in your house. So there we go. Very cool. I, was, I was worried Anyways. Todd was going to see your decorations and not let you guys write for it <laughs> No, it's all good. Uh, luckily, <laughs> this is all he's seeing. <laughs> so that's like point zero zero one percent Oh, it's not that bad. I honestly, I drove past a place today on on my drive home, and it's like a three way stop. And I always just kind of do the look around. Okay, there's absolutely nobody here. Roll through it, and I noticed a house out of the corner of my eye with the huge, like eight foot tall coffins with things crawling out of it. It's like eh, no, maybe no unnecessary. <laughs> you know, I know children are in trick or treating, so maybe there's a little lenience on how far you can go with scaring children, but it's a lot. you know. That's kind of morbid for the Northeast. Didn't you guys just go through a really hard pandemic? Like <laughs> coffins in the what yard? Do, what do you mean just? You're saying it like it's past tense. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Well, the hard part at least. Hopefully. When I lived in part. LA, there was about three or four blocks from us. There was a, a couple and they were production designers. For okay. mm. So they, I don't know when they started this, but we discovered it three or four years into living there. And the last three that I remember, actually two I remember very clearly, they would take a corner of their house that had no windows. And that would be the backdrop of this huge life-size diorama they would do. They'd start building it in like August. That's awesome. <laughs> and so the two I remember, I remember the, the crashed prow of a pirate ship that came awesome. out of the side wow. of their house with, you know, the skeleton guy uh, mm-hmm. driving it at the wheel and the blowing fly. It was huge. That's so wild. Next awesome. year, yeah. It was the reverse idea where it was a life-size steam locomotive, Western steam locomotive, that had crashed into the side of the house and buckled. I was what like, if- what are you doing? How, how are you that not busy? You know? It's life-size resume. Seriously. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> See if so, they get any gigs out of that. That's cool. I'm, yeah, I'm not so. opposed anyway. to that. Uh, okay. So let's do this. So... Great. Chris opens, he says, I'm Chris, I say, I'm Ross, and then you say your name. And I'll figure something out, yeah. Then yeah. I, you could be both Whatever. you. You could be Todd and Paul if you wanted to. You could be. <laughs> Paul will actually be on. He did mention this to me today. He was like, I got I to gotta talk to Ross when you're done, and I'll get on there too, so he'll do it as well. <laughs> yep, we'll line him good. up for some time. Great. And wow. welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Todd. And this is our podcast where we talk about anything and everything off-road, even rally cars. Which I'm oh, still good. I'm still trading emails with Dave fairly. Okay, we should make that happen. Dave was from uh, at Rally Ready Driving School down in Austin, Texas. So that's funny uh, because we've actually traded emails with him as well, and uh, I'd love to do something with him at some point. Separate separate thing. Sorry, go on. Right. Yep. No, but he, he's that much a genuinely fun human to talk to. So, and cool. he has acreage and insurance that he'll mm-hmm. let you come do stuff. And he seems welcoming. He's the kind of guy who's like, yep, I have all the toys you want to play with. Just come, like, come, come, let's do it. That's great. That's great. It's our impression as well, yeah. The problem is at some point he has to pay for that insurance. So he's definitely going to charge us <laughs> money. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure, uh, also the travel, but. Say, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it before it was mandated. Uh, I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. And Todd's Utah. Yep, Park City. Yep. Park City. Okay, so not, I was going to ask you, Salt Lake or? Yeah, Park City, uh, the show, I moved here in 2010. The show started in 07. I moved here in 2010. And then Paul decided he was done with LA and looked all over the the country. And I joked with him. I said, buddy, well, like you guys, I was like, we'll do the show wherever. Our podcast started distant as well. And I said to him, I said, buddy, you know, you're my best friend and we'll do the show wherever. But I am going to mention to you that you keep your skis in my garage. So if you're looking for a place to live, maybe you should look at Park City. So he moved here too. Casually holding them hostage. Exactly exactly right. So the show, as you referenced, is Everyday Driver, which is radio. So podcast, TV, and also YouTube. And as yes, we, um, we see how many ways. things we can cover in a week. We, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of madness for sure. We're between TV seasons right now. We're between season seven and season eight on Motor Trend Cable Channel. Okay. And then we just started a second YouTube channel because apparently we were bored and we do two podcasts a week as well. <laughs> Fill in your time. So, just, you, you know, cranking so you split out the some podcasts things. off to their own channel as well. And so you have the, the no. car videos. No, 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 actually, we, we are one of the weird oddballs. We don't do a video version of our podcast. It's audio only. So with the possible exception of the random like major milestone episode, we're right. audio only. So we don't worry about that for YouTube. But what we were finding, look, I, ask me about YouTube and I will tell you I know nothing because every day I'm completely, completely lost. It but, changes. Oh, seriously. Our original channel was very much the format of our TV show, which is comparisons within different market mm-hmm. segments. 
And as we started getting more and more individual press cars, we started putting the individual press cars on our main YouTube channel. And that stuff didn't play very well. So we've split off the press cars. I say this like it's a problem. It's the greatest <laughs> ever. Like we split off the individual press cars to their own YouTube channel to let them be that to keep our other channel kind of more focused to either the comparisons or now we're doing these cheap car challenges, which, which people mm -hmm. like as well. The stuff that the crazy enthusiasts like us would watch and totally. probably, Absolutely. you know, just geek out over nonstop. Exactly. The stuff that, let's be honest, I like doing the most as well. It's just, you know, when we get a press car, it's just like, okay, we have, we had it recently. It's like, here's a Ram 2500. Mm -hmm. And the same day we got a Sentra. It's like, I, I, I can't put them together. So what am I going to do? You know, you could put the Sentra in the bag. The <laughs> oh, or, you probably or could. if we didn't have to give it back, I'd run it over with the Ram 2500. Yes. And I'd have YouTube Ooh. gold, but I got to give it, it back. Yeah. Yeah, Which I don't think Nissan would like that too much. No. I, I just... <laughs> I just watched a classic movie for me, and this will display my age. I watched The Rock recently. Okay, yeah. And there's the scene where they have a high-speed chase through the hills of San Francisco in an H1 Hummer and a oh, – God. God, it's got to be like a 430 Ferrari. I might, I probably completely ruined what Ferrari model it was. But the at some point, the Hummer just destroys a classic Beetle, just – just up and over, and that's all I could think about when you said big truck, little car. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. M Michael Bay, you know, he came out of doing BMW commercials. He Is went that where he came center. from? Huh. He, he went to Art Center, and he was a film major at Art Center, and so was... Um, I had no idea. Uh, Zach Absolutely Slater no idea. is also really? an Art Center film, film grad. So, because uh, Paul went there. My co-host Paul went there okay. right around the time of those guys a little bit after him. So Michael Bay was an art center grad and he went on to shooting commercials and he wound up as the go-to car guy for BMW in the early okay. 2000s to shoot their commercials, which is mm -hmm. why to this day, if you watch any Michael Bay film, the best five minutes is the time he gets to do a car chase scene. He yeah. doesn't the, the, the car chase, the opening away. chase in, what was the recent one? Was that Six Underground? That was his Six movie? That was yeah. actually pretty good. The first 10 minutes of that film, I've shown to more people than I can count. Cause I'm like, this is where it's good. and then it just kind of, yeah. But then flat. Paul, who has I, honestly, candidly, no film taste whatsoever, <laughs> thinks the rest of the film is great. I'm Went like, to buddy. school with all oh, these no, guys. It's not. And, oh, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. He just, yeah. No. Michael Bay is like the perfect filmmaker for, for my co host, Paul. But anyway, I, no. I am a forgiving action movie critic. Like, if it's, okay. if it's fun, yeah. I'm in. I got so confused in that movie. It was just, I needed a lot of drugs, I think, to watch that, <laughs> which is, are not available in Kansas. Well, that, that's reason. what they were on when they uh, when they wrote some of the oh, script. Apparently, you're 100 so. right about the the opening scene of that movie. Plus, I love Dave Franco, and the spoiler alert dies at the end of that opening scene. Sure. Spoiler, sure. yeah, oh. yeah, that was fun. But no, I don't want to talk about cars. But have both of you seen the uh, M4, M3 that leaked today? Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh -huh. it's not good. No, it's, it's really beaver teeth. Good. It's full, full beaver teeth. Somebody, yeah. Uh, yeah. the there's a character from the a series Dis Disenchantment. It's the Princess Bean, and she's sure. got two, two buck teeth. And that was the the one I saw was her looking oh, at the bad. BMW. I, I was, love it. That's great. Like, that's it's that's not great. good. It's it's not. It's really not bad. good. If you just oh, cover up the front end with your hands and. What's crazy though, I had this thought recently because I recently got for our cheap car challenge, I recently got a BMW Z4, which is the end of the Chris Bangle era, mm -hmm. which okay. is supposedly the worst era of BMW. All the Chris Bangle stuff looks really good now. Nice. Yeah, compared to- And, I, and I, I'm, hoping, uh. I'm hoping that we don't get used to this beaver teeth disaster and we think in <laughs> 10 years, that's really good actually, because I, I, it's horrifying, it really is. That's <laughs> a bridge too far, I think, because this is offensively aggressive, whereas the bangle stuff was kind of offensively understated. Fair, that's an interesting assessment. I see that, I see that for sure, yeah. Um, I don't know, I'm E60 looks great now. <laughs> I agree with you, yeah, 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 totally. So anyways, we should talk about four by fours because uh, sure. apparently that's what our show is about. Yeah, um, Hold on, four. I'm still trying to find the image of the shitty BMW. <laughs> oh yeah, we have, uh, Chris has found out how to do I just share images. my screen and then yeah. it just dropped. I don't have to edit them in. Look at you. Which All is right. great. <laughs> but I can't find one in Google image shirts. That's, <laughs> that's okay. Google image filtered it because it was inappropriate. Uh, so <laughs> that, that sounds accurate. Like the only one I can find is definitely like not what I want. <laughs> I actually, interestingly, since I write for Everyday Driver, I'm part of the Discord, and I shared the Beaver Teeth 
uh, M3, M4 post in the car show section. Mm -hmm. And it got kind of okay response, which I was really? absolutely shocked by. Yeah. I'm surprised as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Everybody kind of just pivoted away from the front end of the car and said, but everything else looks really good. It's like, and the rest of it does look decent. It's just what it happened there. I, I just, I, that's a desperate attempt to leave your mark on a, on a brand. Yep. And that's just terrifying. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, that's it. That's there it. just, there it is. Not mm -hmm. It didn't get better since the last time I saw it. Oh, it it makes me think of Bengal having like, blackmail on somebody and is like you know what my cars take a lot of crap now i'm going to blackmail you yeah so you make a line of bmws <laughs> yeah. that look worse than mine i yeah and you're right if i if seriously if i do the proactive covering thing here the rest of it's okay it's fine. Like, wow yeah it's, it's kind of like an audi almost like it the, with the hood ridges like it looks kind of like yeah. a modern oh, Audi. Wow. It, it's like they've completely forgot what proportions are and yeah. just said oh, oh well so so Let's off road uh, news. Yeah, off road <laughs> news. There really hasn't been much in the way of uh, of news news recently. Um, Ford released a Ranger Tremor edition, which is, I, I guess, like a halfway point to what they are supposedly never going to release here. There's the Ranger Raptor. Yeah. So well, and Ross's favorite version is the one with the stripes, right? Eh, it's not good. Wow. Like that's, that's really awful. I don't, okay, so if you look back to like the S10 Baja, do you remember that? Vaguely. There was that crazy oh. S10 Baja with the light bar and the black and white stripes and everything. And it has actually like 30 years later, it looks good. Uh, this is just kind of like they went on Amazon and ordered some decals and, and splashed them on the side. And I say this as owning a Miata with almost exactly the same decal down the side <laughs> of the car. <laughs> Like that looks good, yeah. okay. and maybe that's just age. But I think it's because it's square. Well, but compared to what you're talking about, that looks staid. That looks conservative. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, as crazy as that is to say, because it looks like too much. But yet you put it next to what we're just talking about with the new Ranger, and yikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Have Ranger. you have you spent time in the new Ranger yet? I haven't. No, I haven't. I've driven a lot of the big boys, but the the compact stuff we really haven't driven, with the exception mm -hmm. of Tacoma. Yeah. Right, and I haven't had a chance to watch the Tacoma video yet, but the TRD Pro is amazing. Yeah, like if, I mean, if we're going to talk four by fours, it's it's, it's fantastic. Phenom it's phenomenal for the off road. It's and that's where it ends. It's it's teeth jarring everywhere else, and the piece that we did on it, we but, actually were in some truly epic cinematic mud, I, and we it was not awesome. our doing. It was entirely <laughs> provided by nature, and um, lucky it was we, the rain. <laughs> we we drove there frustrated. Mm -hmm. mounted cameras drove up this road and loved it the whole time <laughs> and then got back on the road and exactly yeah, and then we got back on the road and went wow yeah. i don't want to drive this every day yeah for sure of course was it the auto or the manual uh it was the auto yeah okay yeah. that's Ooh. how long ago best, was this not the best gearbox <laughs> <laughs> it's not but hey man of course it was loving it off road and we were you know ankle deep in mud and it didn't care and that was great that made the review the review better for sure did you have a support vehicle or you just went for it <laughs> No, we just went for it. Yeah, That's, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's the way to do it. <laughs> because when we, the thing, when we started, it was like a light drizzle. Like, yeah, okay, this is no big deal. And then we got like halfway up the mountain to the turnaround point and it's raining mm -hmm. and the mud's coming down in rivers. Like, all right, well, we better try to go home now. So yep. it got a little, got a little scarier coming back. That's always it, fun. That point where you go, oh, this, oh boy, we're, yeah, we're going to have a problem. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Is it, was it the green Tacoma? Yes. Ha ha. Snorkel equipped. Yo, snorkel, snorkel equipped, equipped, army green. There we go. Right there. Yep, just, there you go. Just takes me a little time to roll through Instagram. <laughs> totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, it I is, study a, at the school of Zach Clapman, so. There yeah. you go. <laughs> hey, no worry. That works. <laughs> yeah, it's a good-looking yeah. truck. It really is a good-looking truck. I just, you guys definitely uh, found the mud. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was insane. Yeah. It so, was the throw, throw away your boots kind of mud. It was that kind of thing. Yeah. For so sure. how did you approach this? Because I had a Wrangler Rubicon. And uh, Jeep very kindly let me borrow this. And I took it to the Pine Barrens, which is yeah. probably most famous for its appearance in The Sopranos. <laughs> okay. And I said, you know, what's protocol on kind of getting the thing dirty? And, and his response was, well, whatever you do, don't, don't do what the guy who, before you did, which required us to bring it through the car wash seven times. Oh, wow. Seven times? Yes, yeah, seven times. First like, of all, um, that car wash operator loved it? and hated them. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Yes, he made his money. I think they have a detailer in house. Let's be real. 
But I hope so. Yeah, the TRD Pro is great. Um, what's not great, and the part of my offensively bad segue is uh, we learned this week that you can get a 2021 F-150 with crank windows. <laughs> which is for who? <laughs> Honestly, which is for which person? Who wants the fleet sales? Oh, you guys froze so hard this time. <sighs> the price difference between the manual windows and the power windows is probably two dollars probably which yeah. i guess if you're making a million vehicles you know like it's nothing is not nothing yeah um but but I'm not, i just don't know who that's for though i mean i, I don't know are, are, who's who's looking at a ford f-150 and going yeah but if i could just get it with crank windows the uh the three people who want it to be like it used to be i guess <laughs> Uh, but you know what? I, to their credit, I do think it's hysterical that if you walk up to any person now and they're inside a car and you're outside, you do the crank window motion for them to roll the window down. Oh, yeah. We all still do that. Yeah. None of us have crank windows, but we just know. K kids, kids that have never seen crank windows know that symbol. They just, oh, it's, yeah, so you roll the window down. Yeah, it's like the Microsoft, uh, like the save, save icon symbol. is still a three yeah, and a half inch floppy. Yes, three and a half inch hard disk is. Absolutely. It's the same exact kind of thing. So, yeah, Paul's got a niece and nephew that have never seen a crank window in their life. And he said to him once, he's like, if you were outside a car and you asked somebody to do it, and they were like, oh, you do this motion. He's like, how do you know? <laughs> You know? It's like That's when you're funny. dialing the phone. You do wait. No, they don't do that anymore. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no. Well, that even, ship has but, long since sailed. <laughs> even, the, even the Lotus Elise, which which actually did. I know I'm back to cars. When you're shocked, but let's do we, it. The, we won't the, be the Lotus, worried about it. We the Lotus Russ and Elise I like cars. <laughs> offers crank windows, mm -hmm. but the crazy thing is, the major Lotus guys that are like you know save weight, the electric windows weigh less. Oh really? Oh seriously? So even there, it's like, what are you doing? So I, I, I don't understand. Who the makes thing. the manual windows versus is it Bosch making the electrics on the electric? Who knows? Oh, yeah, it's a great oh, question. Boy. Don't know. Yeah, it's oh, uh, man. yeah, it's Bob down at the end of the lot, <laughs> stamping out the things. Probably. Speaking Lotus, of Lotus, Lotus crank window pictures are not high resolution. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're actually. It's funny when I was shopping for one a few years ago, I. I would bet you one out of every 20 or 30 had crank windows. Most all of them don't. That's... But occasionally you'll find the Elise with a crank window. It's like, okay, well, there it is. It's like finding a Z28 with AC delete. It's like, who the hell wants that? That's not normal. <laughs> yeah, for Nobody. sure. Yes, for sure. Uh, was, you... Somebody was talking recently about their, a certain model didn't have AC, but they bought a race car, caged it, and that one had AC. Oh, that was... Yeah, um, what was that? I was listening to that yesterday when I was like cleaning up after dinner or something that was farah talking okay. about uh cj wilson's gt4 okay all right which i mean why would you order a gt4 without ac same thing i mean yeah well the, the thing that makes me laugh is when sport, porsche is very very guilty when they say hey this car is all lightened and then you realize the minute you put a radio and air conditioning back in which you're gonna do that was mm -hmm. where all the weight savings came from and now it weighs the same as if you just bought one doesn't Lamborghini do that? So Lamborghini and Ferrari always put the cars on the scale in, the, in Germany or Italy and say, yeah, it's, it's under 3,000 pounds. Or no, maybe it was McLaren. I don't know. Same, different means to the same end. Yeah. Good job on the crank window Lotus, by the way. That, was, that is a yeah. good one. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's a hard one to track down. That's a lot of red. <laughs> that was yes. a lot of red. Yes. <laughs> um, to, like an S2000 interior. <laughs> I need to drive an S2000. I, I saw one today and was thinking that. I was like, okay, that's where I go from Miata. But anyways, do have you, you think... Have I, you have, I have not. I haven't either. And I've, you, you've got an, uh, you have an ND or an NC? It's an yeah. NC club. Okay. All right. The, the thing about the S2000, which is great and, you know, work, worth its acc accolades and all that. The thing about the S2000 is it's a much harder car to daily than a Miata. That's what I've heard. Because really? everywhere you use it is you know, a thousand RPMs to 4,000 RPMs and it's gutless. Mm -hmm. So where, where it actually wakes up and is fun is like 6,000 and up and it's glorious. Okay. But when are you driving the car that way? And, and even the Elise, which has Once, like a cam uh, change. Every two weeks? Yeah, that's the thing. Even the Elise, which has a cam change, it gets more powerful up high like that. It at mm -hmm. least feels like it's got a decent amount of grunt down low. Whereas mm -hmm. the S2000 is like you're waiting for it to find that's something. Hard. Yeah. And if you're doing the stop and go traffic thing, it, it, <laughs> takes away the glory of that car granted you don't want to daily in a lease like that either but <laughs> especially not here our no, roads would not be kind to that i think i think that 
that's the thing where the Miata really shines is the mm -hmm. fact that you can use it in kind of a daily capacity and it's got enough flavor with the engine and enough just push right. that you feel like you're not suffering and then you can wind it out and still have fun. Mm -hmm. But how's the, the uh, how's the ride quality fare? I actually think they're pretty great, man. I, I, okay. I, I do think that the AP2s, which is the late, the second gen, it's like, oh, five. 20, $25,000 cars now, yeah, <laughs> casually. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the AP2s are better. It's a nice refinement. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little less jittery, but they're both great. They're really interesting. Yeah, honestly. gotta find a way into they're one at some point. They still pricey. look so good. And yeah, they they've gotten- great. They look great. Yeah. Up here, a good one is 20 to 25. It's like all of a sudden, all the bad ones are, you know, worth like 7,500 bucks and have, you know, $35,000 worth of Too Fast, Too Furious equipment sure. on them. Sure. Um, but yeah, so circling back, do you think Lotus is going to work their way into the CUV SUV market to compete with like Stelvio and Macan? I think they have to. I mean, truly, I think they have to. I, the, the fact that they're now owned by Geely, parent mm -hmm. company of everybody, including, including Volvo. Including I mean, Volvo. As honestly, I know. The, 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 thing that, the thing that Lotus needs is what happened to Lamborghini with Audi. And I'm hoping that Geely will do that. Yeah. Where you get a company with a lot of money that says, go do what you do and we'll help you where you fall down. And that would be ph phenomenal for Lotus. But let's mm -hmm. be honest, even though everybody, you know, we all cried when Porsche said we're making an SUV, the SUV saved Porsche to make great sports cars. Completely. So in that regard, look, I don't, the world is littered with SUVs. And, but you, by the way, side note, I'm going to plug you for a second, Ross, your article on Everyday Driver about the just renaissance and the best time ever for CUVs is excellent and i totally thank you. agree with you thank That's you i appreciate really, that really good piece thank and you i have not had a chance to promote it properly yet but i do intend to because i read it was like you are on it man i loved it well i very much appreciate that and know that i was going against most of everyday drivers audience when i wrote that <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but you're right because i mean we've had a couple of we just had a gls the huge suv oh from yeah, the 80s, yeah, yeah gls amg 63 that there's no reason for that car to exist but then you drive it and you just go, this is brilliant. It's, For that it's much absurd. money, it better be. Totally. It's absurd. <laughs> it's way too expensive. It shouldn't exist at all, but it's brilliant. And so that mm -hmm. is the crazy thing that if you want an SUV, you, I mean, anything truck-like at all, you're in a real just pinnacle right now. But that comes back to where we are. As much as I don't think the world needs another CUV SUV, it is the thing that Lotus would probably just be able to print money with. Mm -hmm. and therefore make the great sports cars that they can't make any money with. Honestly. Exactly. If they could do kind of what Gilly has done with Volvo, which is here's a bunch of money, totally. go do what you're good at. Yes. Don't get in trouble. Otherwise, you know, then we'll step in, but mm -hmm. we're going to be hands off and go and do, you know, your core strengths. Mm -hmm. If they did with that with Lotus and Lotus said, okay, we're going to build a CUV like the Macan mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's going to be kind of bare bones, but it's going to be a CUV so that people who like Lotus can buy a CUV and then also just continue doing, you know, an Elise or an Exige or the Avija, Avija, however yeah, you yeah. say it, Avija. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, for two. <laughs> but if they could get to that same kind of. Totally. Obviously on a much smaller scale, I think that's kind of where they have to go. It, well, it looks I, like it's being discussed already. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Porsche so paved the way for this, and they saved themselves. So I think I, I totally agree with you, man. If if Geely would just give them that kind of freedom and let them work at that, I think – because the other thing that happened, and let's be honest, this is what's happening across the board, is you have a lot of people, and we fight this on our podcast, but a lot of people who just go, I have to have a car that does everything. Mm -hmm. Do you? Does it have to do everything? Mm -hmm. But that argument is the reason so many people don't buy sports cars. And of course. So they, they love the Porsche brand. They love the Lotus brand. They love the name, the sports car brand. But I can't buy that because it has to do soccer practice. Right. So if you I love that, the Porsche brand. I just can't afford afford it <laughs> separate thing separate yeah separate, separate thing <laughs> this is where you buy used and then that's more a me look. issue no I, I totally no it's, it's also, a valid issue it's a valid technically issue. you could it's yeah, not a cayenne it yeah forever. it's or it's not a cayenne you'd really want <laughs> no i mean hey we but, did the base cayenne that was 71 grand msrp and we bought it for 27 you know okay. so, i mean you can do hey, it. you flip the numbers well done totally exactly right yes yeah. so you know <laughs> yeah. there's but, but I did the same the thing. thing with my Corvette. MSRP was 73 and I bought it for 37. And Bravo. sold it for how much? Because that's not, not 
let's not go down that road. I'm going to take a drink of my seltzer so you guys can keep talking about Porsches. <laughs> but, but that's the thing is you would end up with people that are like, oh, I, I remember the Lotus brand or I like the Lotus <clears throat> brand and now I can have a piece of it because I can go to soccer practice. I think <clears throat> that could save Lotus. I really do. It could and it should. And what in the hell is that that Chris just brought up some picture which looks like it it just, it, it's it literally, a, I Google searched Lotus I'm SUV saying, and it's so all. many renderings, Photoshop it's not thing. even funny. That is all of the Photoshop. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not even sure where to look. On That's that scary. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like panning back and forth going, I'm confused. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> that's a terrifying image. I hope nobody actually sees that. <laughs> Um, there so, might be some truth behind it. There's, there's a couple here that kind of all share the same bones. Well, I think, look, let, let's, let's follow the, uh, the Audi Porsche model for a second. If it's let's an XC60 take, underneath? Yeah, exactly. You take the XC40 or the XC60 yep. and you let Lotus play with it and make their own thing. And then you have Volvo, who's killing it on interiors, help with the interior. God, I mm -hmm. love their interior. They could their just give them the XC60 Polestar, the engineered car, and just say, here, take all the weight that we added to it out of it. Possibly. But, I mean, there's, there's an opportunity there. I think there's a shortcut there for Lotus. This one's very honest. Sense. There is. Sure. <laughs> just, um, let's just go that's, straight there. That's like it. it. Hey, <laughs> yeah, you sure. know what? I work at a Volvo dealership. I'd love to see Lotus is getting sold out of it. That would be great. Yeah, it's the... Uh, cool. The geo prism of the Toyota Corolla world. <laughs> <laughs> well done. It's Yikes. a very specific reference. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Geo. All those late nineties yeah. kids in the house. There you go. Yeah. Oh. That's not good. Oh man. No, it's it'd not be good. It would be a good place for them to go. Um, so, I, in terms of other news, I mean, the rest of the news from anything this week is basically Ford. There's pictures of a, a small Ford pickup based on the, I guess, Escape is what they're saying. Because mm. that's what the world needs. Which yeah. is if it's needs based on the little... Escape, it's kind of weird looking. Front wheel drive, it's, yeah. It's kind of weird looking no matter what. I don't care what you base it on, it's kind of <laughs> weird looking. I, you know. That wheelbase looks long for an Escape. It does, you're right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it'll, I don't know. I guess it's more S10 than the uh, the, current ranger is because the ranger is not that small Fair. Um, but yeah so that 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 was news there's you know ford releasing pictures of a uh, spy photos of the bronco three feet off the ground with what looks like 35s or 37s and yeah i think, I think that's about Jeff saw one in person today with 37s jeff did they had the uh the the press one the orangish you know crazy Media it was photo a one studio model when it only yes. had an electric engine in it is what Jeff said, mm. wow. which of course then the jokes went around Allegedly. that Ford was confirming that the electric engine is coming. It's not. It's just literally what they. It was the easiest thing to put in it and move it around the studio. It's it's not too far fetched. I mean, Jeep's doing the electric, you yeah. know, the Wrangler four by four E. Yeah, the the four by E. Yeah, four by E. Yeah, four by E. Sorry, Ugh, well, it's, I don't know. it's a terrible name. <laughs> it's yeah. it's kind of like what Elon named his kid. <laughs> Practically, yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's interesting. I think the Bronco looks awesome, but you know, now if the thing is, Jeep just said they want to put solar panels on the trails at Moab and try to you know make it accessible in electric only. So if Ford does that. Does that mean we're going to have two different kinds of charging stations on the trail? Well, but then it also means, are you going to have a line on the middle of fins and things where you've got a bunch of people backed up trying to get to the charger? I mean, that's <laughs> probably, I, I'm confused. I <laughs> haven't <laughs> that's been not there. That's not, yeah. this doesn't work. And then what and you, then you, uh, you going to dig a hole and make a big like football size right. batteries? What I, are we? And doing? then you'll have, you'll have what's happening at the supermarkets and the well shopping malls before you couldn't go to a shopping mall, but you. you'd, you'd park next and next to the car and somebody else would take your charging cable out. So you go for a hike and come back and somebody it, stole your charge, I guess. It yeah. sounds like a problem that Rivian's already trying to solve by it having does. vehicles with three or 400 miles of range. Like yep. once you're to Moab, like charge it where you're staying. And then mm -hmm. you would think, yeah. Would think. Like, Have you guys seen a uh, long way up? Not yet. And we okay. talked about this We've talked, so I've read and watched the long way around and long way down. So have I. Yeah, no. like, yeah. Um, 
I haven't seen Long Way Up yet though. And that's primarily and exclusively, I guess, because I don't know anybody with an Apple Plus account. So. <laughs> I, just, I just started it because I've been a huge fan of Long Way Around and Long Way Down forever. And the thing I'm laughing about the most is they decided to go all electric mm-hmm. this right. year, which you probably heard. So they're on yep. one-off Harleys built for them. So yep, they okay. took the Harley electric and they the built- The wire. Yeah, they built the off-road versions just for them. Yep. And then they have the first two serial number Rivian pickups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which and is amazing. They, which is amazing. Built at the last minute for them. Because all, this was all last year when they shot it. But Paul and I were talking about it. We were sitting here going, but yeah, but you're in the middle of South America. Where are you going to charge this? So Rivian has the bright right. idea. V- VC money, by the way. Rivian has the bright idea that they're going to build all the chargers ahead of the production for the entire run of the thing. Really? I can't decide if that's awesome or if it's cheating. It's I, both. I, it can be both. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing in that they can actually implement it. But yes. so much of what made Long Way Round and Long Way Down great was that it kind well, and I guess the Top Gear, uh, you know, adventure episodes sure. kind of found the same thing where there was like a loose, not necessarily script, but we're going to go from here to here, and whatever happens yeah. between is is going to happen. Um, so it kind of eliminates that if you know for a fact that you know you're going to have to put the truck or the bike on a flatbed if you don't get to your destination well but it also uh, creates it, it it ducks it ducks the electric problem though yeah. the electric problem is there isn't it any ducks. infrastructure yet but for us to do this we'll just build the infrastructure it's like yeah but it, <laughs> that, that doesn't solve the fact that the random person can't buy one because there's no infrastructure near them yeah Range anxiety goes out the window when you don't have range anxiety. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm very excited to watch it. And well, uh, Rivian's doing the best stuff. They're the Their coolest. stuff's crazy. It's, it's crazy so cool good. for sure. I yeah. feel like some of the most stressful moments of like long way round was literally, and maybe it's just because of where they needed to be, like as they were progressing through the world. But like in Mongolia, they were stuck at like a river. Mm-hmm. And it was like, we can go the other way, but it's like two days. Yep. First, and that was, that was on. Yeah, what were they BMW bikes? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. All the craziness that they had in the road of bones of Russia was just—it yeah. was phenomenal. Yeah. But it was that unknown element, and yeah, it's I, I'm I'm still enjoying it. But it's it, they've certainly twisted the mm-hmm. the setup with the electric element. I mean, it's made it interesting in one level, and another level. It's like, isn't this quite different as a result? So mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. The, the vehicles it's they encountered cool. in I'm, Russia I'm on board. Just crazy. They were. Talk about the wildest off-road things out there. Like when they put the bikes in the back of that, I guess it was that Russian Unimog looking yeah. thing yeah. and crossed the river and it was like not even cresting, you know, the top of the totally. tires. It's like, okay, this can go anywhere. I don't need anything else. It's like next time <laughs> they'll have a Sherp as a support vehicle. So when they're I hanging out with a UAZ. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <When I laughs> that thing's getting towed. Park There's a cable there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. When I first moved to Park City, there was a neighbor down the block that had a Unimog. And about once a week, that would roll down the street. And I'd be like, who are you? Why haven't I met you yet? Because you have a Unimog. That's uh, insane. You got to do a fast blast of that. <laughs> you have yeah, to find unfortunately, him. they moved before uh, I had a chance to make it happen. But I just could not believe I was seeing one weekly. Like, wait, did that just really go by? Yeah. I, was, it, was it a classic one? Yeah, absolutely. With the kind of the open bed, I guess it was just like their ranch truck. I was like, where on earth and who are you? Mm -hmm. You know. So I went to college in a, in a pretty hippie town, which you'd actually enjoy because it has like the most famous rock climbing in the Northeast. Okay. And, uh, and it's, it's a big time hippie town. Every, you know, like it's the 1960s on main street. (laughs) Every once in a while, this dude would drive through in a lifted Unimog bright yellow, like see it from space yellow and it, wow. it and it was like taller than all of the little like shops and everything it was like uh this is it's so out of place but it was so cool and i tried to track him down and got distracted by a black ctsv wagon like you do like <laughs> you do. yeah like you do like you do um it was in much better shape than that it was clearly somebody from out of town because they had money <laughs> I always like the the one that we never ever see is the Unicat. That one's my Unicat. The Unicat. Unicat. I don't know. I hope it's a, a single wheel. <laughs> Unimog. Oh wow! It's what like the hell it's like that? the Unimog version of a van. It's sure. like the Unimog version of a G wagon. Uh huh. 
Yeah, pretty much. But it's all Unimog underneath. So that's all the crazy four gears, all the like, was it three, three gears in reverse? Uh You you say that, Ross, it looks like welded together G-Wagon panels on the top. (laughs) It's It's just two fronts. Yeah. (laughs) It's Arctic trucks does their own Unimog. (laughs) Scary. Um, They're so great though. So I wanted to touch on Utah and the trails in Utah because Chris and I have both had trips canceled this year. I should be in Utah a little after this airs. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a few months past when I was supposed to be out at Moab. So tell us about the trails. You've done them. You took a Jeep there. Have you ever been? Have not. Okay. All right. I've, I've uh, been to Park City. My best friend lives in Salt Lake and used to live in Park okay. City. So okay, cool. I've been to the area, but not for, sure. not for trail riding. Even though he has a Jeep, we've just never been, been together to got do got it. it. <laughs> well, Moab, I mean, Moab is this different animal. I mean, I, we ha- actually know a guy that's working at Ford now and is kind of tangentially on the Bronco project. And they roped him in because he has a place in Moab and he's lived there forever as like his vacation home. So anytime they go, they're like, Oh, you got to come with us. So, so he's uh, had exposure to the Bronco at Moab as well. And it's crazy because it's not like a lot of other off-roading because it's, it's, it's much smaller than you think the actual area. Really? Of Moab. It's <laughs> much more like compact as far as the trails being really close to each other. All the ones you know about are within three or four miles of each other, as far as where they all start. And then it's all just extreme end rock crawling. And there's mm-hmm. none of the, you know, you're not doing washboard and you're not chasing down, you know, jump trail. None of that exists. No fire roads, it's, nothing like that. It's, no, it's none of that. It's all the really slow stuff and, you know, all of the rocks and that kind of thing. Yeah, we took a, uh, we happened to get a JL Rubicon two-door before they were really out to the public. And we did mm-hmm. it for a TV episode. And we, because it's us and we're idiots, we just went, all right, let's see, we didn't do that, but that we saw that. Uh, we, went, we went down to Moab, which is four, about four hours south of us. They just brought it up toward the Denver press fleet from uh, the Jeep Safari they do every year, the Easter Safari. So they yeah, that's, off of us. that's what I was supposed to be there to for in April. <laughs> and we just picked fins and things, which I'll speak in skiing terms. If you think about trails being green, blue, black, this is like a hard blue. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's theoretically intermediate. We are not off-roaders. I don't claim to be an off-roader, but that was part of the gag. You right. know, it was just, all right, so here's the, the truck that's capable. We have no idea what we're doing. We're a couple of idiots. Let's try this. And so we did fins and things and had an amazing time. So did and, your son. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My son was there and he had a great time too. He was riding in the back. And uh, the, the crazy thing about it is somehow, and this is the interesting thing about the charger thing you brought up earlier. Somehow they've walked the line between making it very accessible so it seems tourist and idiot friendly, Mm -hmm. but yet they haven't ruined it to make it look like it's gone commercial. Right. So you're driving down a trail and they've spray painted white, you know, arrow marks on the trail. It's impossible to get lost, Mm -hmm. but yet those have been worn over time and you can see other people's, you know, if you think about a racetrack has always got the line and the The rubber, rubber. it's got the line and the rubber on the, on the rock, you know, and anytime it gets, scary if you will there's there's always an exit Mm -hmm. you can do the hardcore feature or you can bail out and go around and i think we did probably 90 percent of them we did the hard stuff that's pretty good it was great and then i went back i had so much fun my son had so much fun we went back as a family took my wife three or four really later and rented a jeep because because instead of taking a press car then we just went down there and rented a jeep that was the great Mm -hmm. thing about it is you can show up with no gear Mm-hmm. and rent your gear there and just rent a, a and then nice you don't have to drive it down the highway from, totally, totally. <laughs> from the north you, you drive in or you fly in and you rent your jeep and you just go and like we did one called uh i think it's called hell's revenge yep which, which has is, some of the gnarliest obstacles out yes. there so it's a it's a if you will back to the skiing analogy it's a full black yeah. And there's a couple like bathtub things we didn't do because it was like, nah, I'm here with the family. Let's not try that. Hey, yeah. I love I love how he starts to talk about the thing I already found. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I think Perfect. that one that one is exactly devil's right. bathtub. Exactly right. But but at the same time, there's plenty of places where you're driving along a spine and your your wheels are probably a foot at the most from either edge of where it drops off. You're going right down That's the center. Fun. And so it's just, it, you just feel the air on mm-hmm. both sides of the truck. It's awesome. It's really, really cool. So it's very <laughs> different than off-roading everywhere else. I may right. be making your, your fact that you've missed it even worse, but it's because it's just Next all year. rock crawling. Right. 
I've done that though on a quad, something like that, except it was a drop to the abyss on one side and a drop down to I-90 in Pennsylvania on the other. <laughs> and it was not comfortable. And I was on a quad. Everybody else in my group was in side-by-sides. And I was like, ah, no, 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 no. Sketchy. Well, you're the only one who could jump free. Everyone else was going to be stuck inside their side-by-side. Yeah, jumping is still difficult when you have 900 pounds chasing you. But... I mean, the only part of it that I found weird or really daunting in doing those two different trails, the, um, the fins and things, everybody seems to only go one way, and it's a nice loop. Mm-hmm. The Devil's Backbone has places where you can loop back to right. bail out. So you have places where there's traffic both ways, and there's only room for one yeah. way. And you might not have the Crack. visibility to see somebody prior. Until you so, get there. Exactly. And then you, have, then you have to back all the way down. Then you have to navigate, okay, who, oh, who's the one that has the bad thing here? You know, so right. that was the only thing about right. it I didn't love. But, I mean, we figured it out. It wasn't the end of the world. But, uh, th- but that was the difference in the Devil's Backbone. I mean, sorry, the Hell's Revenge versus mm-hmm. Fins and Things. Fins and Things is just a loop. You're just kind of going the same way. And you're going along. You're feeling good about yourself. And then here comes the guy in the side-by-side, three times your speed. Yep. No helmet, beer in his hand, kids in the back. It was like, what? I, I thought I was doing well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, you don't want to. You don't want to play with those guys, anyways. I, no, I promise you enough. that. <laughs> That's int- it's interesting. You say it's smaller than everybody expects because I guess I've spent too many hours on Google Maps and like Google Street View, and you can plop a little dude like right on the trail at some spots. Totally. totally. Uh, but I guess it expands out into like Canyonlands and the surrounding parks, so it all kind of morphs into one another. But Moab seems like a tiny little town, like in the middle of nowhere. Moab's not a, not a big town, but it's a cool town. And the thing mm-hmm. is, you get just inside the national park, like you talk to the guard station, and like ten feet past that is the turn-in for uh, uh, Hell's Revenge. Oh, really? It's and just another right half off the mile road. Down the road is the turn-in for Fins and Things. So the ones you've heard of are all in a space that doesn't feel like a very big uh, national park or you hmm. know state park. But then you're right; the edges of it bleed into nothingness. So it's not like you're like, oh, it's the edge of the park here. You have no idea. And then I'm sure, I have no doubt, people that actually know what they're doing, which is not me, have all kinds of things that they can go way out and find the one that nobody at Moab mm-hmm. does except for the hardcore. Guy. I'm sure that exists like crazy. Right, right. Because there's plenty of places on the known trails because of easy access where you have the hardcore stuff and the complete tourist idiots and yeah. everybody in between. We actually... Uh, not the same, but we have a hiking place nearby, uh, like maybe 20 minutes, half hour north of West Point called Breakneck okay. Ridge. And okay. same thing, there's green trails and you can take the easy path, the scenic path up and overlook the Hudson, or you can kind of, you know, and they have like painted arrows and there's trail markers, or you can like skirt around the side and, and sure. climb vertically. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, that's like the happy medium and in you know, off-roading too. I mean, some of the places we've gone off-roading up in Maine is just, if you miss a turn, you'll end up in Canada. Um, Or, you know, it's like the little off-road parks in Pennsylvania where, you know, if you miss a turn, somebody's going to point you back to where you should be going. (laughs) It's like resetting on a video game where you just spawn back on the map. (laughs) But that's good. Yeah, we got to make it out there. Maybe... uh, Do, and when, and when you come, let us know, because maybe we can we'll do. pull something and all get out there together, which would be very cool. Yeah, and we'll drag Chris with us, too. I was supposed Great. to have a TRD Pro 4Runner, and this was supposed to be inside a year from when I had sold my 5th Gen 4Runner. Okay. So it was going to be like the perfect, you know, full circle kind of thing. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. then this weird little, you know, pandemic thing happened. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the 2020 nothing goes as expected year yes i get it yes yeah it's not it's it, anyways uh we've uh, we've talked way too much about that on the show <laughs> but <laughs> can can we talk about this real fast oh yeah oh, let's, sure. so this is technically off-road so it is todd and co-host paul took their uh their cheap luxury sedan cars to the salt flats. We did, we did. So, this was brought up by somebody that was watching this series. Actually, one of our patrons brought it up because he doesn't live here and he was aware of the salt flats. And I, we were trying to figure out what the big send off was anyway. So we bought these ridiculous sedans for those that don't know. I bought a Volkswagen Phaeton, which was almost an $80,000 car. And I bought it for five grand. And exactly. Paul bought, Paul bought a, a Neiman Marcus edition 
Oh my gosh. Maserati Quattroporte, which knew was $125,000 in a limited Oh my edition. God. He got it for 10.9. That's insane. So we bought these a year ago and we just started doing stuff with them. And literally, I mean, we're starting another cheap car challenge that's much more organized. The one with these sedans was literally like, all right, well, they're not broken yet. What do you want to do next? So I had a lot of just kind of make it up as we went. And so when we got to this summer, we needed a big send off. We were like, we should go to the Salt Flats. And in spite of the fact that it's only about two hours from us, neither one of us had ever been. Really? Oh, wow. so, um, and, and one of the reasons, honestly, that we'd never been is because the only consistent thing we'd heard is you will never get the salt off the car you take. Which is yeah. like Paul's kind of oh, kryptonite. Which, which is, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> my my co-host's worst idea ever. So it was like, what do you take to the salt flats to try it out? But then we went, these cars are perfect. So yes, we did. As you do. Yeah, we, we, we did our what, our, what is our new joke? And our new joke is that the Bonneville Speed Week, which was about two or three weeks after when we went, we, okay. we looked at the calendar because it, it's it is honestly side note the world's strangest substance because it is depending upon just moisture level depends on how hard or soft it is mm -hmm. okay. and it can it can be like mud salt right but it can also be this hard crust with mud just underneath it or a hard crust that's deep enough that you can run 18 wheelers on it i mean it's it that's crazy is so, so I crazy where the water table sits underneath there that's it's, insane it's nuts. very high so, yeah, yeah, so we um, we wanted to get close enough to Speed Week that we knew, boneheads that we are, the conditions would be okay, but we didn't want to get in the way of Speed Week. So we went like two, three weeks before it happened. And the joke that we have now is that Bonneville Speed Week should have a, I drove this from my house category. Mm. It should. You hear about all of the prep, and, and if you've ever seen photos or anything out there, everybody preps themselves like crazy and brings in the trailers and the sun hats and the everything. Mm -hmm. And we left that morning and we drove to the salt flats and drove on to the salt flats and promptly went as fast as these cars would go. And it was nuts. Does, what's, isn't drag week like that where you have to drive your drag car from, is it drag week or You're is thinking it? thinking of a, uh, it's not a motor drag trend, week. isn't it? It's uh, motor trend, but before it was that, hot rod, it, was, hot it was a hot rod uh, show. Okay. It wasn't power yeah. tour, but God, what it is, is power it? tour. No, that's, that is no. what it is. No, oh, maybe that's no, not power what it tour is. Is something different. I just know that you, they went all around the country and you had to drive your drag car from yeah, place drag to place. Week. Yeah, drag week. Yeah, it's like it's like one lap, but you only go straight. Sure. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's a lot one of interstate time. And <laughs> got it, got it, yeah. So one we, straight. We had, we had a crazy, crazy fun doing that, but it was also mostly insane. And we were glad that those were cars we didn't have to feel special about because, yeah, they're still... Insane. But man, it's crazy to go somewhere where you have no, I mean, there's a mountain over here somewhere miles away, but you have no point mm -hmm. of reference. We had a, we set up a three mile run and you could stand at one end. And if you got the light just right, you could almost see the flags at the other end. That's crazy. And yet, and when you're in the car, you could tell nothing until mm -hmm. you got close enough. It was like, oh, there it is. Just, you could just thundering along. Visual reference was just gone. There's none. There's absolutely none. It's crazy. Interesting. How, uh, how hot was it? Uh, a little over a hundred. It, oh. it was very, very hot. Oh. And the Phaeton's air conditioner decided to not work. So I'm actually- Oh, that's good timing. <laughs> yeah, totally. My, my first run, I am sweating through my clothes. It's about as uncomfortable as I've ever been on camera. And I tried to recover anyway, because I'm in a helmet and the whole mm -hmm. thing, and I'm just drenched. Oh. I, I'm driving along and I can see water, sweat sitting on the surface of my arm. I'm like, this is mm -hmm. horrific, but we still- oh. That's good. That's uh, uh, talk about poor timing. Yeah, for that's sure. Fun. And if you roll down the windows, the interior's gone. Car's totaled. It's irrelevant. Like that's, that's it. irrelevant. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I, I've seen videos, and I've obviously watched and you know your videos and seen your pictures. But I just I can't. As an off-road person who has spent the, probably the better part of an hour just cleaning mud and sticks and dirt out of a single axle, like I can't <laughs> imagine. What the hell? Chris oh, is pulling up cool. random videos, but Chris, I think you're in like sci-fi world here. Well, the the last funny. one was the Mormon Meteor, which is Abe Jenkins out. He's from Salt Lake City. Yep. Okay. Like all the land speed records on the salt flats. This is still Bonneville. It's called the Blue Canal. Huh. And you're actually able to kayak it. Interesting. I haven't seen that before. That's crazy. 
super high concentration of salt and you can probably just float. That's why the water looks like BAMP. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. I need to make it up there at some point. That's like bucket list. For sure. So where else have you guys gone off road other than Bonneville and Moab? Oh, I'd love to tell you there's a big list. There's not. <laughs> that, that's, that's really, that's really the thing. I mean, what we was are the total newbies at it. I, it looked like you guys had a Nissan Titan or a Nissan frontier recently. We did. We had a Frontier, and we've oh. had the TRD Pro, and we've had the Titan, and we try to seek out. Yeah, there you go. I, I actually did a dump run in the Frontier. It was like nice. pickups. Here you go. Um, yeah, but uh, I love that your dump run looks like you're at a pass somewhere above tree line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because this is Park City, isn't it? Correct? No, seriously. I, I went. My dad happened to be in town that week, and we went to the dump. And we got to the dump, and I was like, really. This is the dump. It's you know, it, it was just <laughs> right. Ridiculous. But um, send you a picture you know, of the town dump here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So we um, we we try to get if we've got something that is designed for off road, we try to get it at least some dirt under its under its tires. But I mean, a lot of them are like there's a really cool road nearby that uh, one of my wife's best friends lives like three miles up this unpaved road, and it's phenomenal to have an easy access road that is off road. Mm -hmm. that is beat down but at the same time you didn't go anywhere it's what's not, it like you know, in the winter uh well you say that i don't know if you saw it we did a piece uh two seasons back where we drove a indy miata in the snow oh and the nissan yeah and, and i remember the that nissan road that's on yep. this road in the middle of the winter so it's it's crazy and the thing was my favorite thing about that shoot was the fact that my wife's friend and everybody that lives up there, they all have huge trucks because they have to navigate this road and it mm -hmm. never has decent paving and it's awful. Mm -hmm. So they, the number of people that pulled off the side of the road during our shoot and just looked at us <laughs> while I drove by in an ND Miata on winter tires and waved. You know, <laughs> These men have lost here. their mind. Yeah, exactly. And, they, and I think they all were just expecting us to have to get towed off the mountain, but luckily mm -hmm. winter tires save us. So we do that when we can, but that's not really, I don't know how much I consider it off-roading. The Tundra, Sorry, it's not, the, not, uh, it's not not off-roading. <laughs> well, okay. It's, it's not too much, but it's Fair. not that hardcore. We get a lot more uh, kind of uh, um, rough road stuff, but it's not really the heavy-duty stuff. I guess I keep thinking Moab, but I realize mm -hmm. that it's a broader term than that. Yes. Very much so. Fire roads count. Fire roads do count, <laughs> which is mostly what I did in the Jeep when I had it. But yeah, I don't know. Um, just to circle back on that, sports car in the winter on snow tires is the best. Isn't it the best? I, I totally agree. Yes. I, 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 you've been the champion of that for years now. And it's like, you know, I did Challenger in the winter on snow tires and it was Remember. fine, but turning was horrific. Um, <laughs> it was just too much weight. Anytime you try yeah, to quarter, yeah. it, it, yeah, would, yeah. it would either dig and plow or it just wouldn't turn. Uh, and then most of my other experience was, you know, SUVs and, and a Chevy Avalanche in the snow, which was... Sure unstoppable yeah uh but sports car in the winters it's just it's the most fun and the looks on people's faces is almost as much fun as actually doing it i completely agree i, I yeah that's been my experience as well when i had my frs and i went everywhere and the one that i liked the best was anytime i parked it somebody was like oh i didn't know those were all-wheel drive mm -hmm. it's like, and they're not it's not it's really not <laughs> it's never been all-wheel drive yeah. i just still got here today yeah yep it's great. And the ride quality gets better in the winter too on smaller wheels. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Spongy. <laughs> Added sure. bonus. Yeah, it, that's the best though. It, it's like, I, I don't like winter anymore. Like I used to snowboard and, you know, do all the crazy winter stuff. And then I had back surgery and, and snowboarding was uh, pulled off the table, but now it's fun again. Like it, okay. it really is enjoyable. Um, yeah, I, like, I love them on steelies. <laughs> that's that looks, those are some enormous steelies on that really big. I agree. Yeah, yeah. God, those are like the you know when guys put those huge eighteen wheeler steelies on like a ram, like a diesel yeah, ram. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. that looks like. It does. You're right. I live in the um, Midwest. You're asking me about trucks. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> there. You do know. <laughs> if I start the topic, you do know. I'm aware. But uh, to change a little bit on the subject you guys also mountain bike a lot right yes so yes i always I'm, mourn the fact that when the snow starts falling i can't mountain bike anymore i mean i've thought about getting a fat tire but we've got so many good trails here in park city and i'm mm -hmm. at this point completely spoiled i love it absolutely that's that's what my best friend and his wife like they own a jeep and it's literally just to get them to mountain bike trails sure sure and sure. the parking lots are probably 90 plus percent subarus and jeeps and pickups right which that's their other car 
Yeah. <laughs> Subaru? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Utah is totally sponsored by Subaru. I mean, the Jeep number and of Outback here is either an Outback or a Crosstrek, and that's all that's here. Oh, and, man. You know, Moab has killer mountain biking as well. And uh, I've only done yeah. a tiny bit there. To do that. So uh, I've I mean, seen some of the videos, mountain biking in Moab, and it is the sketchiest thing ever. Yes. Like, the drops what? are not, not okay. What no, was no. that one trail that we – Somebody was talking to us about, maybe it was the quiet cat guy. There's some like crazy long trail. It's like 40 miles or something. It might be no the idea. white rim. I don't know. The white rim is a pretty famous one down there. But the nice thing is there are some, like I did one with my wife and son and neither of them are, are ready to be hucking off of anything. Not that I should be, mind you, but they really didn't want to be. <laughs> We found a trail that actually worked for all of us that was a green trail and it was phenomenal with unbelievable views kind of off of uh, Dead Horse Point or whatever they call it out there. Oh, so, Dead Yeah, that's amazing. You can do some simple stuff and then you can do the stuff where the, it's not a switchback. It's just a way you change the, the edge of the cliff. It's, it's unbelievable stuff that I've right. just seen videos and been like, you know what? You guys can have that. I'm okay with it. Um, the the but, White Rim Trail is 100 <laughs> miles long? Yeah. And Isn't that also off-road vehicles? Like, Absolutely. not just yes. bikes. Yes, yes. Yeah. With difficult clearance and that kind of stuff. I've heard of people both biking and, uh, and riding that. But here's back to... E-bikes are allowed. Back that to would be fun. Stuff. There's, a, there's a, a fairly intermediate mountain bike trail that winds back and forth through the major off-road trails that you can think of in Moab. Mm -hmm. Really? So get to really? A place you're coming in on your Jeep and here is the spray painted area where you look for mountain bikers because they cross the trail here. That's terrifying. What, what, what happened? Okay. And then, so you look and then you go and off they go. There's an off-road park in Pennsylvania where it, it's, it's dirt bikes and ATVs and side by sides, but you're going down the trail and it says, caution, watch your head or something like that. And there's a dirt bike jump that goes over the trail. And <laughs> if they're not going fast enough, you're like, you're getting clobbered. Wow. And it, okay. I've seen people go flying over and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And there's no stop sign or anything, of course. That's hysterical. But wow. At least out in Moab, you're a little more visible. You know, there's totally. not trees or anything. <laughs> and, and, the, and nobody's, you know, nobody's jumping over the trails, but it was crazy. In fact, I was surprised to find that there was more mountain bike crossover on the harder trail at Moab. Hmm. The Hell's Revenge had more mountain bike crossings than fins and things, which was the easier. <laughs> I was like, really? Get this backwards. You right. Know, still right. really cool. I guess if you're going to go there and go mountain biking, you're, you probably know what you're in for. Hopefully. Like, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not a, a rookie going, oh, maybe I'll try mountain biking. <laughs> but, it, but at least they still had, you know, designated difficulties. So you could do stuff, you know, in and around some of the trails that was, hey, bring the kids and do this trail. And then you had others where it was like, please don't bring the kids, you know? If right. Kids will have a bad time. Yeah. So, Chris, you have anything else you would like to touch on? Todd, no, how about you? I... Anything? <laughs> what would, uh, go ahead. I was just saying, it's not difficult to get me to talk about cars and bikes and trucks. So whatever. Fair. Okay. So you guys have year after year with obviously the exception of this year, you've, you've run your pilgrimage trips, yeah, yeah. which are, uh, it's like if Moab is Mecca for, you know, somebody's off-road trip, then you're putting on trips, you know, that are basically Mecca trips for car people. Uh, so if you were in your experience going to plan one for off-roading, where would you steer people? I mean, you're not going to be surprised to hear me say it. I mean, I'll back up the pilgrimage trip real quick. And that is we do the thing that all, let's be honest, if you don't live in Europe, the two tracks you want to go to are Nürburgring and Spa. And the <laughs> yep. amazing thing is they're 90 minutes from each other. Yes. It's and wild. there happens to be a company that can rent actual cars for tracks that can go on both those tracks. So we just kind of, we, we started it with a feature film that we did where Paul and I, you can tell the trend. We just keep trying things that we boneheaded. I don't have any idea to do this. We keep doing that on camera. It's a trend apparently, but we did it. We did a feature film and then people wanted to go with us. So we actually host that trip and kind of set it up for people. So it's just turnkey and you just go and you can have, we've had people mm -hmm. with literally Pike's peak racing experience and people who've never seen a racetrack before have gone on this trip and had a great time. That's amazing. So, the, the similarity there is that if you did go to Moab, I think you could do a similar trip mm -hmm. because you could bring people from all over and the vehicles are there. Mm -hmm. the vehicles are, yeah. And That's then, a good point. And then you could have the day trips to doing different, uh, try different things and people can go different speeds. And yet when you're done, the people that have never even seen an off-roader, let alone driven one, can get back on a plane and leave. 
and the vehicles are still there. Right. And I could even see a variation where you do it a couple of different ways. You have a day when we're going to do this in Jeeps, and then we're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to do it in side-by-sides. That's a Ooh. pretty excellent idea. And get, get a sense of, okay, so we're off-roading, but this is a very different off-road perspective. But I mean, come on, side-by-sides cost. That's a great idea. So, you know, when I think about how expensive those are, I feel like the rental is the key and the oh, Jeep sure. is the icon. You know, what, what if, look, you're having me make it now. What if you could get a world where you do the same trail two or three days, but you get to do it in a Bronco and you get to do it in a Wrangler and you get to do it in a side-by-side. Mm-hmm. And so now you're having an actual discussion of what do I like and why? Right, right. And you could run very different setups, manual, auto, and totally. kind of run through the structure. Are, uh, I think there are even Land Cruiser rentals. All kinds of stuff. Oh, like, like early like, LCs? Like, no, like mine, like an 80 series. Oh, like, really? Yeah. I know, that, I know for sure there's a company out in Denver that rents like fully kitted forerunners and, and Land Cruisers with rooftop tents and everything. I feel and like I've, I've seen a parking lot photo of like... 80 series front ends probably or like the length of the parking lot and i think it was at a rental company but i could that's be completely cool. wrong i mean moab is the closest thing i've seen to what you see at the ring because at the ring there's six eight ten i don't even know i've lost track rental companies that will rent you a race car for the ring now mm-hmm. there's only the company we work with happens to have the, the ability to do it at spa as well but the ring it's just it's nuts how many of them are there right. and so what company do you know of what cars do you like and that is what moab's got going on I mean, you're and, driving down Main Street and the number of places that are renting vehicles, it's, you know, there's one every block and it's a different kind of thing. Oh, that's interesting. Also, in from what you guys have said about the quote unquote, the GT3 dispenser. Yes. It, it sounds like Moab is just basically like the Rubicon dispenser. Practically. It's like practically. there's another one, there's another one. Okay. Yeah. There's 500 of them. Yeah, totally. Totally. And that is the crazy thing where Moab, I mean, it's funny you bring that up because it does feel a lot like the ring. But for off-roading, you know, it's the iconic place and you can just show up with no experience and rent that vehicle and go. We're going to have to make it happen. (laughs) I love it. Let's do it. Regardless, Chris and I are going to have to get out there, even if we don't uh, put together a a wild undertaking like you guys have. But I'm fairly certain I'm driving near it in the next couple of weeks. But uh, I think our plan right now is to use our, my 08 Sequoia as a tow rig for a, just a travel trailer and just try to not have cell coverage for a week. That's if you go down plan. I-70, you're, you're right there. So yeah. Go down to where? If you go down I-70 through Utah, you yeah. will be 20 miles from Moab. Yeah. And so. Point West. It's uh, <laughs> about so it. <laughs> I'm headed to Denver first, obviously, since I'm in Kansas City. And then from Denver, we'll head West. And then um, I think we're headed toward, I this is sad. I don't have an itinerary for a trip. <laughs> Why is that sad? That's great. That's the that best kind of good. trip. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, you have a trailer and a family, so it's a little more well, complicated, it, but and you know, remember, this sounds is fantastic. The, this also is the, be careful in Denver. My best friend lives there. And I think I told you this, he said it was 102 one day and 36 hours later, they got nine inches of snow. Yeah. That's, so, that, that's I'm, I'm close enough to the Midwest to that, to understand that weather <laughs> actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. Fair. Yeah, I think on our on our kind of our general area is like, I don't know that we'll go to Moab, uh, but like uh, North North Rim is really what's high on the list for us to just. Okay. And I think there are enough fire roads on the North Rim that like I don't have to worry about getting this trailer stuck. I can just get off near the side of the canyon. What's awesome. the worst that could happen? Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm gonna have it's to call our. It'll be good. Yeah, our former <laughs> podcast guest who lives in Prescott and be like, "Dude, you're the only person I know in forever." <laughs> yeah, if you have service, good luck. Exactly. <laughs> North it. Rim is the uh, the North Rim's the quiet one, right? South one yes. is that everybody goes to. Yeah, South one has Grand Canyon Village. It sounds like my entire family's having a tickle fest tonight. I don't know if I, you guys can hear that or not. Oh. <laughs> that that might be a good day. cue for like us it. to wrap yeah. things up. So. <laughs> Anyways, Todd, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, plug thy yeah. shows and uh, media. I mean, we're everyday, we're everyday driver pretty much everywhere. So if you go Everyday Driver, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, we're on all of those. Again, the, the TV show comes out. We do uh, typically about six episodes a season. We do two seasons a year. So 
those after they play on Motor Trend, if you, and this is the not the Motor Trend app, it's the cable channel. After it plays on there, it does go to Amazon Prime and it plays on Amazon Prime. And then eventually those episodes also go to both Pluto TV and uh, YouTube, but that's a couple years later. So you can find us lots of places. Uh, the, again, the TV stuff is more comparative and the YouTube stuff is more standalone cars. And then if you really want to hear Paul and I talk about cars, you know, twice a week, we do do a podcast <laughs> that is Everyday Driver Car Debate. And the whole premise of that is just people write us and say, here's who I am in my life and this is the amount of money I've got. And Paul and I go, you should get one of these. So we've sold everything from Priuses to seven seaters to, uh, I think, uh, you know, crazy exoset set, you know, this used mm -hmm. to be a Miata. We've talked about all of it. So uh, we love doing that. We're at 500 and something podcast. It's a lot. That's crazy. It that is a lot. Oh my God. Yeah. I remember when it got to 50, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. to 50 shows already. As, as I feel the same way. Yeah, we did 50 because we were doing, that took a year. We were doing once a week and then somewhere in the second year, we started doing twice a week and they add up quickly at that point. So mm -hmm. each of them is about an hour and it's a lot, but we love it. Yeah, well, you guys have done very well for yourselves, and uh, and I'm I'm happy to be a tiny little microscopic piece of the team going on in the background here. Ross, I do so. <laughs> like your writing. We've got a good thank you. Right for thank the website, you. and the thing I like about it is everybody's got a slightly different voice and a slightly oh, yeah. different writing style, which I thoroughly enjoy as a writer. And uh, and again, I'm t telling you, I loved your uh, Golden Age of SUVs piece. I thank you very much. I do appreciate that. So on that note. Thank you again. Absolutely. It was great to have you. We'll have to get, uh, get Paul to come on sometime when, when things line up. And uh, yeah. And he can talk about everything but Lotus? Yeah. Uh, no, he'll just talk Porsche. Just, just clean the schedule. It'll be Porsche the entire time. Yes. I'm okay with That's that. That's okay. Has, has he heard about Brad Brownells, what he's doing with his Boxster? No. no what's so, he doing? Do you know Brad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Good. is it a 986 Boxer? It's a 986. It's a 97 or 98. It, it, I think it used to be a 2.5 car. Okay. So or, I guess has, technically still is a 2.5 car. It will be kind of. Kind of. 2.5 plus? Uh, yeah. So two five his, <laughs> his goal, he has a, a salvaged Nissan Leaf, Leaf motor Nissan that he's Leaf installing motor. in the front. Okay. And there are... 911 axles that are that he's adapting to fit to the leaf motor and then i think he's going to have them cut to length but once he has the correct dimension then he can just have the axles were made whenever he needs them so basically it's a it's going to be a hybrid assist plug-in hybrid boxster in a way well, he took out every he's, single thing. He's, that he's wasn't, taken out every. It's literally a single yeah. seater for him. It's, wow! He took the roof out. He took. I think he's the taking the windshield seat. off, and he's going to put like a little speedster window in the front. Um, but no, I and, can't and wait when, to see it. What we didn't talk about tonight in the Porsche world, and we'll talk about when Paul comes on, is all the crazy uh, Cayenne Trans Siberia rally trucks. Totally. totally. Yeah. 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 Those are cool. I love those. Those, those are really cool. Those cost more to fix a uh, wheel bearing on than probably my car costs. Oh, cars, but, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. but very cool. So anyways, thank you again. And uh, thank you. yeah, that's thank about it. Thank you very it. much, Todd. Appreciate it. Nice.